Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the frequency of a new awareness. Today, we're going to look at Jesus' bloodline. And as I have mentioned already in the last video, legends are told where it is too dangerous to tell the truth. So, legend has it that Mary and Jesus had a child. And when Jesus was dying on the cross, Mary was pregnant. And to deliver this baby in Israel would have been way too dangerous because the Romans would have never allowed a descendant of Jesus, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Israel, to, um, to live. So with a small entourage, Mary fled to Egypt. <clears throat> There, the child was born and named Sarah. At the age of 12, Mary, Sarah, and this small entourage sailed, legend has it, with a boat with no oars, and landed in the south of France. But interestingly, the Catholic Church has a similar account that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was placed in a boat without oars, starting on the shores of Israel, and ended up in the south of France. And that is recorded by the Catholic Church. Is it an accident that they both end up at the same place? Well, Further, legend has it that descendants of Sarah were married into the Teutonic line of the Franks. And those Franks ended up to be the kingly line of the Merovingians. They were rulers and kings over France at the time from 457 to 751 AD. And at that time, the Kingdom of France included today's territories of Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, and Austria. So it was a pretty big kingdom. And these Merovingians, these kings, had uh, character traits or some nuances that um, that looked like they could be descendants of Jesus. First, they were sympathetic for the Jewish community. Secondly, they let their hair grow like the Nazarite. They never cut their hair. And thirdly, legend has it that some of them were able to put their hands on the sick and heal them. So there are some attributes of um, that could be revealed as Jesus' teachings. But the Catholic Church didn't like these Merovingians because they were not practicing and were not really sympathetic to the Catholic Church. They said, the Merovingians said, oh, we are Catholic, but... But they didn't really were in it with a the heart. They just was pro forma. So the Catholic Church initiated or were involved in 751 AD in the killing of the last king of the Merovingians, King Childeric III. And also the Catholic Church helped the new house of the Carolingians to become the new kings of France. And with this um, union of the Catholic Church and the Carolingians gave the Catholic Church power, more power to um, spread the doctrine of the Catholic Church. 
So later on, at the Crusades in 1099 AD, we interestingly find out that a descendants of the Merovingians answered the call, and his name was Godfroy of Bouillon, Duke of Lorraine. He led the crusade and conquered Jerusalem. And there, this same man was, uh, was crowned King of Jerusalem. Could it be? Full circle, a descendant of the line of Jesus, therefore a descendant of the line of David, becomes the last king of Jerusalem. Later on, in the year 1966, the history of Lorraine was printed. There we can read an interesting account. There it reads, in the 16th century, Henry of Lorraine, Duke of Guise, and King of Jerusalem, entered Joyville in Champagne. And there it is said that some individuals screamed and cried out to him, Hosanna, feel you, David. Hosanna, feel you, David. And it means as much as Hosanna, son of David. And another interesting aspect, this account was written by a man called Otto von Habsburg holding the title of the Duke of Lorraine and King of Jerusalem. Obviously, it's just a titular title of King of Jerusalem and not any more real kingdom. But he still holds this title. So, isn't it interesting that the King of Jerusalem as a titular title still exists and it is held by a descendant of the house of David. So there's not a lot of information out there, but my hope and my belief is that in time more and more information about the bloodline of Jesus will appear and we will know more about the man and his teaching. If you are interested to get more detail about Jesus' bloodline, there's a book written called Holy Blood, Holy Grail. And I put it in the description below. It is a very, very interesting read, if you're interested to find out who Jesus and his descendants are and if they are still alive today. So that is all. In our next video, we are going to look at Jesus' legacy. What does Jesus want to be remembered for? What did he leave us that is so important? And I tell you one thing, it is not a religion. So. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.